Here is your latest African news. About 100 African students are pleading for help to leave the Ukrainian port city of Kherson. They have been sheltered for days in underground bunkers on campus in bitterly cold temperatures with no heating or supplies of medicines. The students have said they are traumatized and desperate to leave the southern city. Russian soldiers have also fired shots at people protesting against their occupation. The Nigerian students have applied to their government to help evacuate them before it is too late. Nigeria's government says it is working tirelessly to help them get out. Last week, its ambassador to Moscow was told by a Russian official that plans were being put in place to get the students out through Russia, but that has not happened yet and in any case the students say they were very wary of being taken to Russia. In the meantime, the students, some of whom are from other countries including Cameroon, Ghana, Egypt, Tunisia and Morocco, say there was still some food available at the university but that some supermarkets had run out of supplies. Tanzania is allocating wildlife hunting blocks through auction in a bid to raise more revenue. Tourism Minister Damas Ndumbaro said successful hunters will be allowed to kill aged elephants, lions and other big game considered unproductive. The East African country is aiming to raise $30 million from the auction. About 25% of the proceeds will be spent in helping communities living near the hunting blocks. The rest will be used on anti-poaching programs, game protocols, transportation, surveillance and prosecution of offenders. Tanzania is Africa's leading country for big game hunting in unfenced areas, it has approximately half of the world's wild lions population and the third largest elephant population in Africa. Protesters in the country want the government's intervention to end violence against foreign nationals. About 100 people marched to parliament on Human Rights Day to ask the government to intervene in ongoing xenophobic attacks and campaigns against foreign nationals. The march was organized by the concerned citizens of the Western Cape and according to their memo is endorsed by 15 organizations. The group is calling for the immediate arrest and prosecutions of those who use threats and violence against foreign nationals working mostly in the informal sector. They also demanded an assessment of actions by people under the banner of operation Dundula, which is a group that hopes to drive out undocumented African migrants from their communities. The group believes by doing this, they can ensure that jobs and business opportunities go to South Africans. The joint anti-Ndundula movement also called for immediate reopening of the refugee reception centers. Pika said this would allow Home Affairs to issue and process documents for asylum seekers and refugees. The Democratic Republic of Congo will officially be admitted to the East African community next week, adding a 19 million market for the bloc. The East African Community Secretary General Dr. Peter Matuki, in a letter to ministers in charge of the East African Community docket in member states, confirmed that the heads of state would approve the admission on March 29th. Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta, who is the current chair of the East African Community, is expected to preside over the summit that also includes President Samia Sulu Hassan of Tanzania, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni of Uganda, Paul Kagame of Rwanda, Everest Ndashimiya of Burundi, and Salva Kiir of South Sudan. The East African community currently has 193 million citizens. Democratic Republic of Congo's admission would raise that to 280 million people, spanning the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. The mineral-rich country already has established trade ties with most of the East African community member states through bilateral deals and at a multilateral level where it is affiliated to Southern African Development Community, where Tanzania is a member. Dozens of well-known leaders in Jamaica, including professors and politicians, are demanding an apology and slavery reparations as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge prepare for a trip to the former British colony. The group is rejecting the visit of Prince William and Kate, which will be part of a larger trip to the Caribbean region that coincides with the 60th anniversary of Jamaica's independence and the 70th anniversary of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Local opposition also forced the royal couple to cancel a visit to a cacao farm in Belize. The upcoming trip to Jamaica has has angered some who say they are still awaiting for an apology and slavery reparations. Jamaica lawmaker Mike Henry, who has long led an effort to obtain reparations that he estimates at more than £7 billion, said that an apology is only the first step of what he described as abuse of human life and labor. Hundreds of thousands of African slaves toiled in Jamaica under more than 300 years of British rule and faced brutal conditions. The group say that it will be celebrating 60 years of freedom from Britain, adding that it is saddened that more progress has not been made given the burden of colonial inheritance. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. Great news, you can now buy our African children's book, Mao and the Gardens of Plenty, a book that teaches children the power of great ideas. This book is the best way to start exposing your children to African stories told by Africans. Find the purchase link in the description below. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member, Patreon or donor. And remember, Africa is watching.